Beautiful song. If you're listening to Triple J, this is Robert from The Cure. Uh, that's a song that I play more and more as the year wears on, on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, although it's still Saturday morning for me, in a strange way. Um, anyway, I'll play a bit more music before I start waffling too much. The next one is a Nirvana song called Come As You Are. <laughs> That was Bold as Love by Jimi Hendrix, and um, I think I'd better find some people that are still living, actually. I'm just realising there's going to be a bit of a, bit of a theme developing here. Um, yeah, you're listening to Robert from The Cure on Triple J, home of the hits, not necessarily hits of this particular year. But um, uh, Now I think I'm going to take a call from someone. Yes, hello. Hello, who am I talking to? This is Jodie. How are you, Robert? Hello, Jodie. All right, thank you. That's fantastic. I can't believe I'm speaking to you. Yeah. Where are you calling from? Um, I'm in Warrnambool, which is pretty close to Melbourne. Oh, yeah, I know it really well. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, I must say, first of all, I've been a huge fan for years, Robert. Um, I think your work's brilliant. Thank and I just want to ask about the possibility of you making a solo album after The Cure finished. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've already sort of done it. Um, I keep putting it off because I'm enjoying myself with the band too much. So All right. most of it's written, and um, I've contacted the the various uh, people that you know, other artists that I want to play on it to see if they're interested. And most of them have said yes. So I expect I'll I'll start it sometime um, next year, probably next spring. Oh, excellent! But I think what we're going to try first when we get home from Australia is um I think we're all going to go into the studio and try another Cure album, see what happens. But if it doesn't work, yeah, you know, but. Whatever. Anyway. Excellent. All right, thank you very much. Right, okay. I'm going to go back to music now. Okay, thanks. It's, uh, I feel like I'm kind of like building myself up through the Saturday. So. Uh, and someone who's still alive, thankfully. This is 1979 from the Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, it's like no one told me it was ending. That's two songs back to back, 1979 from Smashing Pumpkins and a song recorded in 1979. What a link, eh? The Eternal from Joy Division. That's like falling from summer into winter in about five minutes. Um, this is Triple J and this is Robert from The Cure, the unfamiliar voice that you're hearing. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of calls now. I think the first one's Fletch. Hello, Fletch. Hey, hello, Robert. Hello. Hello. I uh, I'm actually wanted to ask you why there wasn't any um um actually um was it in, um music videos in the last album? Um, I primarily because I've got fed up of making them. I think right. We, um, well, we did one to um a song called Wrong Number off the yeah um, yeah yeah the single from uh, the Glore album. Um, and no one showed it, so it kind of seemed, ah. seemed like a bit of a waste of time making another one that no one was going to show. Well, yeah. you just don't. Um, what, you're not into the image sort of stuff well, that's, anymore, or...? It's part, I mean, it's mainly that, but there's also, like, a, 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 the idea, I think, that The Cure's really... I mean, with Blood Flowers, the, there was no intention of having anything from the album played on the radio. Really. Right. I mean, it wasn't kind of like being, thinking, right, we're going to make an album that isn't going to get played on the radio, but we sort of realised that we'd have to compromise what we wanted to do in order to get played on the radio. And the two go pretty much hand in hand nowadays. I think the, the days of us just kind of making a... a Darkly funny video and getting it shown endlessly on MTV are gone, really. And, and I'm sort of, I'm sort of thankful that they are. Yeah. What about um, like on your website, like with um, actually with Radiohead and that sort of stuff? How they've done, you know, sort of a lot of visual side of stuff. Would like, you know, why like, could you get into art, like, like in the outside of it, you know, sort of on, on the website? Well, we always, we, we always mean to. I mean, like um, between us, we've got a couple of like um, handhelds, and we kind of we are filming stuff all the time. But it's really just like getting around to doing it because we want to do it all ourselves. I mean, our, our website's kind of is up to date, but very um, um, unvisual, I suppose. Yeah, 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 that's what I thought. Yeah, but then, uh, but if you try to, like, go, go online in England, you'd understand why. I mean, it takes forever. Sure. You know, so I think we probably will. When we're, we're going into the studio after, when we get home, and I think probably there'll be some downtime for certain members of the band. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they can probably utilise that by putting stuff together. and sticking so hope, wine. Yeah, well, hopefully by Christmas we'll have something um, a bit more visual put together. We're intending changing the website at Christmas anyway, so um, we'll try and incorporate. It's cool. a good idea. Um... One last question. Yeah. Would you be able to play The Drowning Man tonight? Are you, uh, like, you playing that one? Or? Um, yeah, we haven't done it yet, but um, it's, 
yeah, if I remember. Just my little request, that's all. all right. <laughs> I'll try and bear it in mind when I'm putting together the set list. Cool. All right. Okay, awesome talking to you, man. Thanks very much. Huge fan. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, cheers. See you tonight. And next I've got Lorenzo. Hi. Hello. How are you? All right, thank you. Good. I'm sure you're sick of hearing uh, people saying they're a huge fan and everything else, but um, I am. I just had a quick question. Yeah. Uh, um, I read somewhere in the past you guys used to send Perry through the crowd before a show with a video camera, yeah. um, speaking to people, asking if they were, you know, what songs they'd like to hear in particular. Yeah, that was that had to stop when he when he joined the band though. Oh, okay. <laughs> he insisted it was part of it, part of the deal. <laughs> anyway, sorry, carry on. Yeah, no, I just wanted to know if, when was the last time you did that, and you know what sort well, of. Well, I'd say that he, in fact, even when um, he joined the band, because we 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 known Perry for a long time before he joined. Um, I think it was 1990 was the first time he played with us, and he was still doing that on um, certain dates on the on the Wish tour of '92. He was still going out into the crowd. I think he kind of got a bit hooked. It's a good way to meet people, anyway. No, it was it was, it was interesting. It was like we did it all through the um, right, right the way through most of the 80s actually. Just like we used to watch the video of people, and it kind of gave us an idea of who was in the crowd and what they wanted to hear. And we felt like we were playing to people. I mean, I, we don't do it now because. Um, we, you know, we can't find anyone. I mean, Perry's got so, sort of had a certain rapport with the audience and managed to sort of pick the right people. We've, we've, we have tried it with other people doing it, and it's a bit disastrous because, as you probably know, you know, you react to the person behind the camera when you're talking to a camera. And um, when Perry was doing it, we used to get a good reaction. We haven't really found the right, the right person to operate it. But I mean, I think with the advent of the internet as well, we've got like we can find out what people want that much easier because I mean, we just have to go to like. You know, fan sites and and chat rooms and stuff, and see what people are talking about. You know, what we've been doing at other shows to find out what's going down well and what people would rather hear. So yeah, I can so if we, if we want to like tailor what we're playing to um to what fans want to hear, which of course we do, um, <laughs> we just go you know go online. But yeah, that that was kind of my next question as well. I was looking at a lot of the set lists on your uh, website that you've played in Europe and um, in the states. They're they tend to be like re quite a lot different between one and the other. Are we going to get more in Australia? This is closer to what you play in Europe, or closer to what you play in the States? Because it seems to be more commercial with what you're doing. Um, in North America. we didn't really. It's that the if you look overall, man, the, we've played from about 55 songs, maybe a bit more, over uh -huh. like this year. Um, and we played all of them in America as well as in Europe. I think occasionally we threw in a, a slightly more kind of upbeat set in America. Um, but the, thing, the difference was we were playing in the summer and we were playing outside and I think it's, it's kind of a slightly different sort of vibe for one yeah, of a better word. Yeah. I think probably here, I mean like it's sunny, looking out the window it's sunny, I mean once we're indoors and it gets, you know, and it's, we start to create an atmosphere, I think it'll probably be a little bit more like um, Europe than America. Okay, okay. and as just another quick one, sorry to take up your time. Um, there's a few B-sides, obviously, on from the um, Blood Flowers. They're listed on the website. Are we ever going to get a chance to hear them, or they're going to be released with anything in particular? Yeah, that's that's all, like I was saying earlier. It's all part of our um, master plan to update the website. Is actually making everything available. It's like now we're out of contract with all the majors. We can hopefully just put all that kind of stuff up there, all the outtakes and all the B-sides, without me being hassled by lawyers from around the world, which is really what's held things up up to this point. Because I just yeah. can't be bothered dealing with it, you know. So. With that beef fight collection you were talking about last year or whatever it was a couple of years ago. Yeah, I mean, it, again, it's like it, it's one of those things that does. It's really time-consuming, and I'm, I, I've got. Um, I don't know if I've got the right personality really to sit down and sort through things. It's uh, I, I'm always thinking, why am I wallowing in this? But no, I will get round to it, or, or some of it. I, I should learn to delegate a bit more. Uh, that'll be my New Year's resolution. Hopefully, it'll be up on the website and you'll be able to hear it. Anyway. Talking okay, of hearing you. things, thank you very much for calling in. It's a pleasure okay. to speak to you. You too. Hope thank you enjoy the concert. Bye, and so. Thanks. Now you'll hear Only Shallow from My Bloody Valentine. Triple J. We listen to Triple J, the unfamiliar voice being Robert from The Cure. You heard My Bloody Valentine and then Pink Moon from Nick, Nick Drake and Monkey Gone to Heaven by the Pixies. All part of an hour of very magical music. Right, I'm taking a couple more callers, so stop me waffling on. First one, I think, Sebastian. Hi, Robert. Hello. 
How are you? It's all right, thank you. Um, uh, my question's actually uh, about the new t- the, the current tour. Yeah. Um, I was wondering what influenced sort of the decision of sort of this being the last one. I mean, what's you know, why is it the last? Um, <laughs> this is a tricky one. I, it's like instincts. Like with anything I do with the band, I, I never really have very, very good reasons once I kind of verbalise them. Yeah. But um, it's just in, inside myself. I know that. I've enjoyed this year of, of touring more than I have any other year of um, playing with the band, but I just can't see me doing it anymore. I, yeah. I, 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 I don't necessarily think we would stop playing completely, but um, you know, doing a Cure tour is quite a, it's a big thing because if we go somewhere, there's usually a lot of people want to see us, and so it's like you know, I mean, it's boring, but it's like a, it's kind of a scale thing. It's like ergonomics, and it's like lots of people, lots of crew, lots of travel, and it's, yeah, it's I think you have to kind of want to do it. You have to, like when I you know and I. And I've been doing it for a long time, and I just figure that um, if I just if I don't make a sort of a you know definite break from it, I will find myself being wheeled in and out of venues. Yeah, yeah, of course, like yeah, I guess it'd be very monotonous. Um, well, I mean, once I'm doing it, I'd, I'd like I say I'd, I'd love it, you know, the show, particularly when the shows are good. But um, it's just the rest of it, it's all that goes with it. It just gets a little bit much, I suppose. And and it, it's one of those things, you know, you can either do one thing or another. And I just figure that there are other things that I would probably rather do. Okay, thanks very much. That's all right. Have a great tour. Thank you very much. See ya. Bye. Next on the line, I've got Chris, I think. Chris. Robert, hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, how are you? Very well, thank you. First of all, thanks very much for bringing the show down to Australia. Uh-huh. You've got such a huge fan base here. It's awesome to see you here. My question, Robert, is um, you mentioned that you've done some demos for the next album. I was wondering if that's going to follow along the same theme as a trilogy or whether you're going to head in a new direction once again. Um, well, the others were, were expecting me to have done... You know, usually I react against, um, you know, when we did Disintegration, the next thing we did was an album called Mixed Up, which is like remixes, and I think the others were expecting me to do something similar, but um, I think I'm surprised there now myself, actually, by continuing on in pretty much the same vein as Bloodflowers. I think because I, I, I've enjoyed playing, you know, making that album and playing the songs this year, that the songs that I've written are kind of in, in a similar mood. If anything, they're more miserable. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't kind of uh, quite decided on how to approach it lyrically yet, but um, but certainly musically, it's it's very it's the more atmospheric side of the band and more sort of like you know that that part. There are there are no radio singles I, I fear on the next album either. Well, that's great. Well, from a personal level, thanks for continuing. That's all right. Great. I hope you enjoy the shows. I will. I'll be there tonight. All right. And next up, we've got a song from Suzanne Vega, "Small Blue Thing." <laughs> album Come and Die Young, that was Come and Die Young by Mogwai, before that was Walking In My Shoes by Depeche Mode, and before that Small Blue Thing by Suzanne Vega, you're listening to the National Countdown Show on Triple J with Robert from The Cure. A um, couple more callers before I go, first one is Stephanie. Um, hello Rob. Hello. You doing well? Uh, yeah, I think so. Ah, uh, fine, thanks. Um, my question is, I was wondering if you have one standout Cure track that you enjoy playing the most live? Um, probably through the course of the year, I think Bloodflowers has become my favourite Cure song. Because um, it, it's like we 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 usually close in the um, the main set with it, pretty much every night, and it's a uh, it become a very emotional moment. There you go. That was it. That was my answer. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. That's well, all right. <laughs> it's one that I like too. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you for everything, the the time, the music, the tours, all of it. Thanks. Thanks very much. Bye. And oh, that was it. Uh, Richard, I've got on it. That was uh, a bit abrupt. I'm sorry about this. I'm not very very used to doing this. Is it? It's not. It's not my real job. Uh, okay. Hello, Richard. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, my question is, how was your trip over here? Uh, well, it landed. 
<laughs> so it was fine. Yeah, that's a good thing. Apart from that, I can't say much about it. I wasn't really um, all there for most of the trip. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I brought my um, mum and dad over with me actually on the trip. Yeah, for the first. They've never been to Australia before, and I figured, like, as I'm giving up on those, well, they've got a lot of relations out here that they haven't uh, seen okay. in that years. So um, they kind of kept me uh, occupied. Cool. And um, you know, they took it in turns to drink with me, and, <laughs> and time flew as mm. we did. Well, I went over and I saw you in the Wembley Arena. Yeah. And it totally went off. Yeah. And I was wondering if it's going to be anything similar to tonight in Sydney. Um, what, you think I can remember what we played at Wembley? Um, <laughs> some of it's going to be the same. I, well, I'm probably going to base tonight and tomorrow night on um, sort of around what we did. We did two nights in Paris earlier in the year and two nights in Los Angeles. And I figured out a good way of kind of breaking up the 50 songs across the two nights based on the idea that some people are going to go... For the, you know, both nights. So, mm. uh, I'm not quite sure. I haven't done the set this yet. I'll be doing it when I get down to the venue. So, oh, um, cool. Who knows? Anyway, you're my hero at the moment. And um, <laughs> it's great talking what to you. doing at the moment? <laughs> at the moment. Well, it jumps, you know. Yeah, until some some other youngster comes in. Yeah, along. being a 15 year old, I've got to leave my. You yeah, know, yeah that's true. Yeah, sorry, I keep forgetting mm. how, how fickle teenagers are. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I hope you enjoy it anyway. Alright. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. Right, and then that's, I think I've just about run out of time. I've got time for just, I haven't really, but I'm being allowed to have two more songs. Um, I've had a fantastic time. Thank you very much, Triple J, for um, having me in here. Um, we'll finish with Brand New Key from Melanie, which is a sort of a weird choice, but something that I've always loved ever since, you know, from the days when I was a teenager. And Hello, Goodbye from the Beatles. Anyway, goodbye. <laughs> A couple of more selections there this afternoon on Triple J from Robert Smith of The Cure. He left us with the Beatles, of course. Hello, goodbye. Does that, does that song need a back announcement? I don't think so. And before that, Melanie and Brand New Key as well. Selected by Robert. Many thanks for spending some time with us here at Triple J. And uh, it was a pleasure to have him guest DJ for the last hour. And The Cure, of course, are in the country. And they're playing tonight at the Sydney Entertainment Centre, tomorrow night as well. And then Tuesday night, they've got two shows coming up Tuesday and Wednesday night of this forthcoming week in Melbourne at the Rod Laver Arena. Canberra is on Thursday night for The Cure at the Royal Theatre. And then, of course, they're one of the headlining acts at the Livid Festival in Brisbane next weekend, next Saturday.